welcome to Switch It Up. And today we're talking about one of my favorite things in RV life and that is Varla scooters. This is version one, which we received about two years ago and they just came out with Eagle One version 2.0. And we're gonna see what the differences are and speeds and all the things that you might wanna know about choosing a Varla scooter. So that's what we're gonna do. A little unboxing video today. I'm excited to roll the intro, let's get to it. A man and a woman left their home To switch things up and go on the road And they didn't know where they would go But it's gotta be better than staying home They switched it up They switched it up I have been super excited about this for quite a while. See, when they, we've had version one when they first came out with it, and they sent it to us almost two years ago at the same exact resort that we're at now, and we got to do some crazy things with it, and I was super excited to see what a high-powered scooter would be like in our RV life. Since then, we've traveled all across the United States. We've used that scooter up hills, down hills, everywhere. Still, by far, I'm riding the scooter more than we actually ride e-bikes now. It's light, it's compact, the whole thing folds down, I could go on and on. But then they came out with Eagle One 2.0. You know, if you've been following for a while, they actually had one that's one above this. They announced that a long time ago, they sent us one, we've been able to ride that around, and I actually really liked it, but it was a little bit bigger scooter. So we ended up doing a raffle, giving it to a very lucky individual, and I was waiting for this scooter. See, they all have their place. This is, this this Eagle One is more nimble, so it was, I could carve in a little more adventure. The other one is meant for like commuter, long distances. It had everything that you would want as far as like distance and speed and everything, but I just, there was something about being able to carve. I don't know what they've done to the 2.0, and we're gonna unbox it together and see what the changes are. But we are, let's, let's do some stats real quick. Box comes 95 pounds. The scooter itself, from what I've read, is 82 pounds. It'll go 40 miles an hour plus. It will total travel distance is 40 miles if you're not trying to just you know use every ounce of energy out of it in fifth gear. There are five gears, which we'll go over in a little bit, but let's do the unboxing, see how it comes and how it would be shipped to you and see you know what changes that have been made. I hear this has been a few years in the making because they were trying to figure out some of the additional changes that they can make to the Eagle One to keep that you know, being nimble and doing all that fun stuff. So I think that's why I'm so excited about it is because if it stays true to the original version with some upgrades, that's a huge plus. As usual, they give you some contact paper. You can change out the style of your Varla so that's pretty cool we never ever changed out our other contact paper that was on this one so it's kind of cool that they've actually included some different to my understanding it's mostly all put together except for like the handlebars that we'll have to walk through and setting all those up and this time I didn't go with red oh my goodness what they've done it looks like they've taken all the components of the other scooter. Oh, this is gonna be fun. It's all packaged in here really good. Obviously, if they're gonna ship it from a long ways, they better have it in there. But handlebars are all disassembled, and then you have the foam that's around it. But other than that, the assembly is gonna be pretty minor. Ooh, look at these tires, traction. The ones I currently have don't have that. <laughs> 82 pounds but I went with blue it's not my typical MO because I like red a lot oh I can already see oh the locking mechanism they incorporated this locking mechanism from their other scooter and then once that locks there's an actual pin goes in through the side so you have double locking so that makes, oh, hold on, let me get this all together. Oh, they put the kickstand up front, and this is more, this is, oh. Okay, I'm liking where this is going. Hold on. Oh, you guys, they truly care about me. They must know. They're gonna start including 
braces for your hands and knees. When you're going 40 miles an hour, that's probably important. And as always, all the other connection parts, which we'll pull out here in a second. Looking at it, you can see that it's smaller. They kept a smaller profile, which I really like. So it's not as super long. Here we have in the box, looks like a wrench. We gotta put on the headlight, mounting brackets. Of course, here's a bell. Connections for all the wrenching. Additional screws, which I think is pretty wise to have. This is the brains of the whole thing. Charger. Now, according to what I have learned, this has dual charging ports. This has dual charging ports as well from the original. General charge time with one charging port from basically empty to full is about nine to 10 hours. If you actually use both chargers, uh, what'll happen is you can reduce that time down to about five to six hours. So just depending, and I believe you can actually order an extra charger. I'm gonna see if the charger that I have for this one currently can also work as a dual charger. So I guess we'll find that out together. Apparently we need a, an actual 13 and 15 millimeter wrench. And of course the infamous instructions, which in one of my other unboxing videos, I didn't necessarily read them and I probably should have. So I'll make sure to read those. Overall dimensions. According to this, we're 49.21 inches this direction. To the top, to the handlebars, you're 51.97. To my understanding, this is actually meant for any rider that's, I believe, over 4'11 to 6'7. One, handlebars. Okay, so the key here is, I've learned, is that I generally, the way I ride, I like to have my brakes either a little farther forward, so that puts your handlebars a little further forward, so they're, they're down. This gives my thumb tr throttle. So all I'm really doing is just tighten this down, making sure that every kind, everything kind of fits. You have to keep in mind, Sheila, she happens to only be five foot three inches, and she really likes to drive this one. So to make this as comfortable as possible, we'll do a comparison where I'll bring the other one next to it, so you kind of have an idea of uh, the two. And the way I'm seeing it, this might actually be a little taller than the original Varla. The infamous control panel. Everything's run from here. I made this mistake the first time when I got these. I thought these were just like Varla kind of cool things. These are actually your keys. Since this is a wireless unit, you actually tap it and then that's what turns it on and off. So don't throw these away. Don't cut them apart like I did um, originally on the last one. So they are actually keys, they give you two. The fun part is it's pretty much self-explanatory. It's not like you're rebuilding a rocket or anything. Everything's color coordinated. So this is black to black and there's a little bitty two arrows and you simply snap together. Look at this headlight. Now the original has headlights, they're just down at the feet and they come in in these two little areas, which they, they worked really well. But now looking at this, not only does this have light here, it has also lights down below. So they doubled up on the light. As far as the height, it is a tad taller, just a little bit taller than the original, but here's where it gets better. So when we're moving in and out, these two clips were a clip to lock this all in place. And people would complain saying that they felt like when they rode that, that this was loose. I got used to it. I, I wasn't worried about it coming apart. I actually enjoyed that because it gave me, I don't know, I enjoyed the ride through. So this was never a problem. But when you put on the take off real fast, this would move back and it would kind of, until you got used to it, you weren't. What they did was is they implemented a different system. So they went with the tuber. And then with the tube, it has two locking mechanisms. So now all of that play is gone. Super, super, super secure. Here's the other thing, RV life. When you're traveling or van lifers or whatever you're doing, what happened was is that you'd have to take these two mechanisms down and then you'd have to pull this collar up and then slide that collar up so this would bend down and then it wouldn't lock into place. 
So you'd actually pick it up from this lower section and then over there. Look what they did here. They implemented something really smart. So not only do you take this mechanism and you turn it, so you got two locking parts. You pull the pin out like that. This comes down oops, like this, but look, they put a hook in here. Oh, my other scooter's in the way. So now with that, you just simply reach down, pick it up and move it. Still 82 pounds. But now it's just much more easy to move around because you have a, a big handle space that you can move it with. Super smart. And locking it in place when you throw it onto like your RV and stuff, the wheel doesn't turn back and forth. Everything's locked where it needs to be. That's a really good idea. Now let's talk interface. This is gonna be good or bad depending on how you, how you see it. This is actually a tr trigger like a finger control. I loved this mechanism. I felt like I was way in control. The last barrel I got has this new apparatus where you have a thumb control, which I understand why they do it. It's because you have now all of your hand up here to reach for the brakes. It's a little more safe. The problem, and I, I'm just saying it out loud, the last time I rode with one of these thumb controls, there's a little play here before it actually kicks in. So I imagine I'll get used to it, It'll be interesting to see how that plays out, but I'm, I'm anxious to see if you can adjust this a little more before, because I like it to be more responsive. So we'll see how that plays out. This actually has a key, there's the keys in the house, and then it actually has eco mode, turbo mode, so you had buttons that you can control both motors. This, I believe we're doing everything in the interface that's right here. So we'll fire it up. Ooh, look at this. This just always feels good. So we'll fire it up, see what we have to work with on the battery. Zero, zero miles. <laughs> that always feels good. Here's the other thing that's happening right now. We're at 58% on far as the battery goes. I'm gonna have to charge it up. But again, we have five gears. And I told you that I would talk to you about that. First gear, I believe is six miles an hour. Now, that seems really slow, because it is. But if you've ridden any of these, you'll find out right away that six miles an hour is perfect when you get into some like walking areas and it's just, a, it's just an easy, great speed. And so six is great. Second gear, I believe, goes to 15 miles an hour. Third gear goes to 20 miles an hour. Fourth gear goes to 30 miles an hour. And the top end, fifth gear, goes 40 miles an hour plus. Hope I said all those right. So I think it's 6, 15, 20, 30, 40. 6, 15, 20, 30, 40. Yeah, I believe that's what it is. Now when you're dealing with that, you're also going to be, if you're wanting to book around at 40 miles an hour, you're gonna decrease your range. You're not gonna be able to get that 40 plus miles. But quite honestly, I mean, I just like having that option to be able to take the scooter and go, you know, 10 miles on a ride, five miles out, five miles back. And we rarely have to charge. I mean, even the charge on the original one was great. So I can't imagine how this is actually gonna do uh, in that scenario. All right, let me get all buckled up, go grab another camera and we'll go for a ride. Plan here is, uh, I can already feel like the tires have more knobbiness to them. All right, so the plan here is we're gonna take the scooter out. We're gonna go on a little bit of ride. I've got the 360 camera kicking. I have a camera down there, camera over here, you, of course, watching. We'll put it in third gear. I think that, that'll take us to that like 20 mile an hour range. And we'll see what we can capture go for there. Maybe we have some people that are around here that are one of our events. Maybe I'll have them do some test rides here in a little bit, get their thoughts and opinions. Oh yes. Okay, first things first. Remember when I talked about there being a little play in this? So see all that play before it actually kicks in? 
that's something you have to kind of get used to. I will say, um, the steering is much tighter. And I think it's because they went with a 10 inch wheel and it actually has grooves on it. So, but I still got that looseness that I like, not the steering dampening that I'm, I was used to on the other scooter. So let's see how it goes up here. Off road, baby. The whole reason you get these scooters is because this gives you the opportunity to go just about anywhere you want and feel comfortable as you're doing it. So here's the thing I just noticed is that I just noticed this. Look, there's actually a, a turning stop. The other one would almost go all the way around, but they actually put a stop on there. But the travel distance that's still here is huge. Scooter is actually set up for a person, I think that's 330 pounds. But it also means that my wife and I can actually ride on this, which we actually do. They probably don't recommend that, sorry Barla, but a lot of times in campgrounds, she'll stand in front, I'll stand behind, and we'll take it to go to like campfires and things like that. So it helps out immensely. Let's go see. Speed test. Now it's time for a speed, a lovely speed test. We'll stay, let's see what this six mile an hour is. So this is one, this is six. So it's almost like walking, pretty slow. Easy to be around a bunch of people if you need to be. So I like that. Then it looks like, yep. Second gear is 15, it's comfortable. A lot of times you'll find that you'll you'll ride in 15 miles an hour mode just to get to different places. I like the turn. It's a great turning. The way this is set up. I'm gonna go to three. All right. Twenty. Got the 20 mile an hour kick in. Let's try brakes real quick for 20. Ooh. Okay, you got two. That was actually a great response. A little brake check there. All right. Down the hill. We'll do a little. Okay. We have a hill down here. This actually goes up to 30 degrees. We'll try that. I'm going to fourth gear. It's a little slow on takeoff. There you go! 29, 30. So that was 30. Alright. Now we're going to do fifth gear. 40's a little tough in this environment. I'll get a long straightaway over here so we're not in, in the way in, in the way of anybody. I like these brakes. So, okay. Pretty good straight away. Let's go see how this works. goal here is we're going to try to do that that grade going up and see how it handles with both motors as you can see 
this is called Tolona Ridge is the RV park we're at and there's a big huge place up here and that is um I'll cut through here oh I love the stability up on top of the hill is their clubhouse so if you've ever in LJ Georgia you need to check this place out so I'm gonna take this loose gravel Give this our best shot up this hill we just came down. third and it was able to eat that out this one up before the um the tires that have all the different grip in it that it would be more of a rough ride and it's not it's actually pretty smooth it is a slower kick in response than the other barla but it's smooth super smooth this is joe chris they showed up here we go here's what's happening you guys need to have an honest opinion by somebody that's never even rode a scooter I think that's fair. Then we'll try to get an opinion by somebody that has a Varla scooter, maybe, and a couple other people that have different types of scooters. What's your YouTube channel? Uh, JK Roaming. There you go. So, Varla got another YouTuber on here from JK Roaming. Okay, so here's what we got. Of course, you got your brakes. Yep. Up here, you got your gears. So the controls are like most e-bikes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, both motors will kick in. There is some play here. So gotcha. with your thumb and you'll take a minute to figure it out. But coming from a bike to this, we'll see what your thoughts are. Let's see if I bite the dust. You're not going to bite the dust. <laughs> so let's start at one, huh? Yeah, actually, I probably start at two. Start two? Yeah, you'll feel a little bit easier with a little more speed. You know where the brake is? There's two brakes. It's just That's like your great. bike. <laughs> just make sure. Just like your no bike. No faith. Don't look at your feet. They're still there, they're attached. It is a, it's a different experience. It really is. You know he's gonna want one now. Hey, don't get cocky. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Now go through the grass. <laughs> through the grass? <laughs> yep, go through the grass. Over the curbs. Cool. <laughs> I told her she's got a ride. You got to come ride. You got to try this. You really do. You got to try it. It's a different experience. What are your thoughts? First impression. Right, it's a lot smoother than that thing. I know, because you have two shocks. Yeah. Yeah, where our, awesome. our e bikes, you're depending just on, well, you got two shocks on the front, big tires. Yeah. I'm too short. I don't know if you caught nope. it. I was jumping up you're, and down the whole way. You're not too short. It's for 411 and above. Okay, you're on, you're on two. Okay. So, I just put one foot on and just use your thumb. This is your thumb. And then until you get the hang of it. Okay, so that's throttle. Yep, and These then your brakes. brakes. That's it. Okay, we're going. Going, you're going. <laughs> she, she just went. Yeah, just, she didn't even stop. Yeah, natural. <laughs> Absolute natural. Well, oh, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> I was afraid to get out of um, two. Of course, 
because you're not used to it. I don't know. It's just something about it. Like it's it's fun. It's freeing. It's. Oh. And you made it up that hill over there. That the big, the big hill. Yeah, this one over here. It's like a almost a twenty percent grade yeah. or something stupid. Yeah, I'm in third. I didn't even have it in fourth or fifth. Now in third, it was like I I'm weighing in at two hundred pounds, so it's it was making it digging in with both wheels, but I made it up it. I'm not telling you how I like it. I want an unbiased opinion. So Harold has had the joy of driving the, what's the, the, the Varla that's the next step up. And he actually has his own electric scooter, don't yes. you? Yes, yes I do. So this one, um, fifth, third is 30 mile an hour, fourth, or fifth is 40. Fifth is 40 mile an hour, fourth is 30 mile an hour. Full send. Well, it takes a while to get up there, yeah. but. It'll be interesting to see, because this doesn't have steering dampening as much as the other one oh, does. Oh, I can tell already. It's a little looser on the, yeah. on the steering. I like that much better. All right. Okay. Am I just supposed to go? Yeah, and then you're going to give, because you've had been on many scooters. I like it. <laughs> I like the suspension. Well, it's like the other one, though, right? No, I, I mean, feel like this suspension is softer on this one. I know. I was thinking that, too. I don't know what it is. So, I like the kickstand a little bit better than what I have currently. Yeah. One Strange Adventure. Another YouTuber, just so you know. I'm out here spreading the love. Varla. You should look him up. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to put, I'm gonna put this one in the back of my... No, no, this one's gone. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I see like a spanner key on the back. Oh yeah, you, you could, could probably you can adjust make it. Stiffer it. and smoother. Nice. Right there. So you just you turn this. Ah, yeah. yeah. See, it's on threads, so yeah. you can loosen that coil spring and make it softer, or tighten it up and make it a stiffer ride. There you go. Yeah. What did you think of the tires? Because they were. Did you feel they felt smooth to me? They even though they're knobbier. Well, oh, they're really smooth. We're on. We're yeah. on pretty smooth parkway too. Take it on the grass. But I like how they did this whole thing. It's more secure than my other one. Mm -hmm. oh. This is the Eagle One 2.0, and that's what I have is the 1.0. And then you have what is that? That's the that's the Eagle Pro, isn't Eagle it? Eagle Pro, yeah. So if you look, come over here. But if you look at the two of them, this one is a little bit longer. And the height, like the height is about the same. It looks like they, what they've done is they incorporated this same technology from the Eagle Pro and put it in the Eagle 2.0. But they put a, the light instead of down here on this one, they put it up here. You've had your Eagle Pros for a year? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we bought one and then we bought another one right behind it. And that was because of us? Is that our problem? It, yeah, <laughs> you're a bad influence on my pocketbook. <laughs> and that's not true, because I did not influence that. <laughs> I had nothing to do with that. That was her. That was she. She had that. She was like, I needed a better ride. That's a heck of a ride. What's, but what's the clip for, Todd? That. Oh, you guys. That's a okay. We don't so, have that. All right. So when this comes down. Yeah. So this comes oh. down and locks in. So now you can use the main part as a, like a handle. Oh, that would be so nice to have. Yeah, so I don't know where they got that feedback from, but when yours comes down, doesn't this lock? No, it doesn't lock. No, this thing hits here. This they is must awesome. Have, that, they must have came up with that idea. But a lot of it's the same. It looks like the suspension's the same. Yeah. Maybe. The brakes. That, um, the tires on this is, I think, 11 and a half, yep. and these are 10 and a half inches. Oh. So the tires are a little smaller. Again, Turn. this is a great for commuter and long term and more stability. The Eagle, it, the Pro has so many better, like, great advantages. And then this they made for back to that off road setup. The charging ports are in a different location. Oh, yeah, on top. Instead of on the side. Yeah. They're awesome. They are awesome. It's my go. It's my go-to. Uh, I said the same. It's my go-to electric. Like when you're going out and you're gonna go somewhere in an RV park or something, it's just better than having a bike. Oop, yeah. it's on. Better turn that off. Our yeah. electric bikes are still in the garage, and we've been here for almost a week. <laughs> <laughs> and Marilyn still rides. 
She's trying to hide, but I'm not letting her. I am her. trying to hide. <laughs> but yeah, what, my thing is, is that these are really tall. And Marilyn, you don't have an issue with how, because how tall are you? Are you 5'1"? 5'2". Five 5'2". Five two. Five two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she, she rides too. Oh, I did that, sorry. Yeah, so it's like, even though you're shorter, you yeah. can still control it. Mm -hmm. Oh, very easily. Yeah. So, good stuff. I wanted to see what the differences were between the two. Yeah. There is less steering dampening on that than this. Okay. Yeah. It's looser. Oh, a lot. Yeah. It's half. It's half. Yeah, it is. It is over half. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. Like the improvements they've made on this scooter, and I know price-wise, people are going to ask how much. I think they're running around that seventeen hundred dollar range, but I think they might have given us a promo code. I don't know. And if they did, I'll put a link here, a link down below to see what kind of discounts they gave. I did a quick two miles. <laughs> it was a pretty quick two miles. And I, I got to tell you, this has got to be now my new favorite toy. Now I've got, if you've seen my other videos, got a lot of electric toys from bikes to one wheels to, but we're talking overall, like if you're in a campground and you're wanting to go different places and do different things, by far the scooter is just the easiest thing to just jump out, can handle any of the terrains that you want, feel comfortable on it. Good for almost any age. I mean, granted, smaller people, you know, if you're under that four foot 11, you can see how the handlebars could be a problem. So, but they improved the kickstand. So now it's actually a piece of metal that doesn't bend. And they put it in the middle versus in the back. So it's more stable. Now, granted, I'm gonna have a lot more questions when I'm using this over the next few months, but thanks Barla for sending this out. Appreciate it. I look forward to sharing more stuff with you guys soon about how I'm enjoying it. But as of now, my um, other Varla might go to my grandkids. Grandpa got himself a new toy. We're out there.